Hello YouTube, so this is going to be a video understanding some leopard gecko genetics. So right over here I have my male leopard gecko Smexy. He is an adult, about 8 inches long, and weighs some 50 something grams. So he's going to be helping us understand genetics today. So he is a normal leopard gecko. Okay, you're going to come back there. And I have my laptop open. Um, we'll just leave, leave my school laptop because my other ones are charging. Um, so I could show you what some of the different morphs look like as we're doing this video. Alright, Smexy. Alright, you gotta, you gotta calm yourself. Okay. C calm, calm, calm down. Okay, okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is albinoism in geckos, um, specifically leopard geckos. So, Today, there are three known strains of albino. Um, the first one was developed or created by Ron Tremper, and this is called the Tremper albino. Um, it's a very beautiful gecko, of course, and just keep in mind, all three of these recessive albinoism genes are completely different than one another and cannot be combined. So, like I just said, it's recessive. Um, so this means, how about I just show you what it means? Okay, so I put my gecko in a box so I can get on with the video. So to represent um, the different types of albinoism and um, just like normal traits, we're just going to be using TT, which is homozygous dominant um, for a wild type, also known as like normal, just like, you know, that kind of gecko. Um, and if the gecko is albino, it would be homozygous recessive. And for albinos, you could, and for all of the recessive genes, the traits will only show um, the alleles. I think it's called if they're double, if they have both of the um, recessive genes. If they just have one of them, then it would be heterozygous. You can't see this, but it's there. So this is one reason why you don't want to breed pet store geckos because you don't know what they're het for. They could look like a to totally normal gecko, but they could be het for rainwater. And then if you bred a het rainwater to, say, a bellovino, then you don't want to be mixing the albino genes, so that's bad. Okay, so to show you what I mean, we are just going to open this marker. And so, in this diagram, we are going to be crossing, I don't know, it feels like it's really zoomed up. A normal gecko, which is het for tremper, with a tremper gecko. And a punnet square is really easy to make. So, theoretically, you would be ending up with 50% normal het albino and then 50% albino. And with animals that like that have recessive genes, it's really easy to tell because it's either going to be yellow and normal or it's going to definitely be albino. You can tell because of their eyes. Um, and so I'm going to show you what a triple albino looks like. Um, you can't necessarily visually tell the difference between the albinos with your eyes but for the most part you can kind of guess but if you have to be guessing what kind of albino you have you're not going to be wanting to breed it um so trempers have like the brightest colors that i've noticed throughout my gecko collection um and throughout all geckos in general really i've noticed that they have the brightest um deepest colors and for the other two strains of albino, it's the same kind of diagram. Um, the Bell albino was created by Mark Bell. Um, I'll show you. This kind of albino tends to have the most purple, but like I said, you can't really visually tell them apart. You would need to know their genetics. Um, the Rainwater was created by, what's his name? Um, Tim Rainwater, um, also known as the Las Vegas albino. And so this one tends to have the most washed out colors, um, but you know, not always. This is just like 
most of the time. And so this is my school computer, so I do have some tabs open <laughs> for myself and then some for um, other things. I don't know, there's just, I just have some windows open to show you. You know, just this is the normal look of Gecko. Um, I am using, I think you guys should check out this website. Um, so this is basically one of the sources that I'm going off of and I'm just using it so that I could make sure what I'm doing is right as I go through this video. And oh, just just ignore that. That's that just uh, helps. Um, and I exited it really fast so you can see me and no I'm not a boy. That was just someone who took a picture with me. Um, okay. Um, so let's just go back to the video. And we're just going to look at this beautiful gecko as I'm explaining some other things. Here, let me pick them up. Put them right here. So there are obviously a lot of different birds um, out there besides albinos and normals. Um, you have the blizzard, you have the patternless, and let me just t tell you a little bit about them. So the blizzard is a recessive gene, so if you're setting up um, a Punnett square, it would look just like the albino one. Um, same with the patternless, and the patternless and blizzard are sometimes really difficult to tell apart visually, so um, if you're buying a gecko from the store and it looks patternless, don't just assume it's blizzard and don't just assume it's a Murphy patternless. Um, the Murphy pattern list used to be known as Lewistic, but over the years, um, the name has changed. Um, so both are recessive genes, um, and very pretty geckos. So another gene is tangerine, and so this is a recessive gene, and instead of having this nice orange, he's like a high yellow. A high yellow is just a line bred normal. It's not, you can't breed, um, say, a Max Snow to a whatever and just be like, oh, it's het, high yellow. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, and things like pastel, um, jungle, they're like all line bred, really. Um. Dominant most of the time, but that's just because it's all different strains of like not strains, just like breeders will take say two what line bread is they'll just take two um, leopard geckos that say have a lot of yellow in them, like him, and continuously breed them and breed them and breed them until they have a lot of babies with this really high yellow. And so tangerine instead of having this, <gasps> don't jump. Instead of having this high yellow, the um, yellow pigment, they'll have orange. And what the pastel is, is they just have like duller colors most of the time. Oh my god, what did he search? Orange and what the pastel is. <laughs> oh my god. Silly gecko. So pastels um, tend to have um, a lack of black pigment most of the time and it's like a light brown or tan jungles have um, like a random pattern so you know I'll just show you what these <laughs> look like instead of me trying to explain that um, so leopard it's hard to type with one hand because right, I have my iPad in one hand alright Maxine you're going back in the box Alright, here's a pastel leopard gecko. As you can see, it's not really a black spot. And now let me just search up a jungle leopard gecko. You can see, like, how their back is. Instead of having just, like, random spots all over the place. Okay. So, tangerine... Um, also, if you get more, um, I forget how to pronounce it, corotene, something like that, in their diet, they'll tend to have more intense colors. Um, this is often, like, combined with super hypo, um, carrot tail, baldy, 
and people create a lot of um, cool morphs. Another gene is the eclipse, and this is a gene that only affects the eyes, and it is also recessive, so you would create a diagram like this to show it. Um, has solid black eyes. Sometimes um, the eyes are what's called snake eyes, and the eyes aren't 100% black, maybe 80, maybe one eye's black, one eye's not. And um, the eclipse is used in the raptors and Diablo Blancos. It is not the same thing as a super snow. A super snow is something I'll talk about later. Um, and as you can see, he just has normal eyes. There's also things like marble eye and I, you guys need to do some of your research. Don't just like assume all of this is true because some girl in high school is telling you this. Um, cause you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm an expert because I've only been keeping leopard geckos for a year. Sure. I know a lot and I've put hours of research into this, but I'm not a breeder yet. I'm going to be one eventually and you should do some of your own research. So there's also Max Nose, which I'm going to talk about right now. And this is a codominant gene. And what that means is I'll just have to show you. So we're going to say that this is, you know, that's a bad example. I don't like W's. Um, two lowercase would be a normal because this is dominant. This would be max now. So, if you have one dom dominant gene of the max snow, you would produce a max snow. You know, they're like they have the white instead of the yellow. Um, very distinct looking gecko. Some of them, obviously, a lot more pretty than others, but it's really easy to tell them. And this is one um, heterozygous gene that you could actually tell visibly because you could definitely see it. And so, if you were to breed two Max Nose together, like so, and that's this is supposed to be a capital, so what you would end up with is 50% max snows, 25% super snows, and 25% normals. If you understand a Punnett square, you'd understand how this works. And so what a super snow is, a super snow, when these two genes, when these two max no genes combine, it is a homozygous dominant um, gene. And this is different than the Eclipse um, Super Snow. And so they have these black eyes. They have white and they have black stripes running down their body instead of normally having a spot. There's another one. It could also be crossed with other genes like albinoism. It can be crossed with really anything. And so it's completely different than the eclipse gene and if you say were to breed this back to any other kind of gecko you would not see the black eyes this is you only see the black eyes when you get this also another thing is blizzards will sometimes have black eyes or snake eyes but that is not the eclipse gene and the only way to be tell to tell for sure if your gecko is in fact an eclipse blizzard would be to test breed it um, so then there's other kinds of snows, like the line bread snow, the gem snow, the tug snow. And the gem snow is, like, when you breed these other kinds of max snows together, they're not max snows, they're snows. And when you breed them together, say if you bred a gem snow to a gem snow, you would end up with a gem snow. You wouldn't get the super snow. Um, it's not the same kind of gene. The, if you bred a tug snow to a tug snow, you would also get a tug snow. You're not going to end up with a super snow. Oh my god, my phone's ringing. Um, or vibrating, I don't know. 
But say you were to breed a tug snow or a gem snow or a line bred snow back to a max snow, you would in fact get a super snow. But the whole purpose of producing these line bred geckos is to keep them pure. So don't muddy up the waters. If you have albinos, don't mix them together. If you have different kinds of snows, keep them pure. This is, you don't. In a couple of years from now, and we're not even going to be able to tell if it's a max snow, a tug snow, a gem snow, because they're all going to be the same thing. And the fact that if you breed a max snow to a gem snow or to a tug snow shows that in the past people have bred them together, and so the um, tug snows and the gem snows do carry some faint genes of the max snow. Um, so. Now we're going to talk about hypos and super hypos. So this is a gene just like the Max Snow. Um, and I mean, it's co-dominant, so you would get the same kind of thing. And so if you don't have any genes for hypo, you would just create a gecko that has all these spots on their back. And then if you were to get an animal that's heterozygous for this gene, you would create what's called a hypo. And it has a lot less dots on its back or spots show you a picture. Hypo, it, it means hypomelanistic. Okay. Alright, so what just popped up is a super hypo, and that means it has absolutely no spots on his back, but this might even, yeah, this is a hypo. Um, as you can see, it just has a few spots. And once you get the homozygous dominant form of this, you would create the super mm -hmm. hypo. Alright, I just need to check my phone in case it's important. Oh, I'm stopping. It's just my friend. Okay, um... Alright, let's also talk about the enigma. The enigma? I don't know. Enigma. Just, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, so this was created by Mark and Kim Bell, the same people who made the Bell albino. And so, it's a dominant mutation, and so far, nobody has been able to produce a homozygous form of this type of gecko because it is <laughs> predicted that once you have the two genes, they'll never hatch. And whenever there's always a high concentration of death or within these eggs when people breed them for some reason. So if you breed an enema to an enema, um, maybe 25% of those eggs aren't going to hatch because they are the homozygous form. Um, the heterozygous form is the only kind that has ever been produced, um, only type that won't just abort itself.